Hi everyone, Vela from Online Combat Battalion and this is a tutorial on setting up a mission using the Alive mod which is the Advanced Light Infantry Environment. So let's get started straight away. Uh, obviously you'll need the Alive mod which is available in the workshop and the link will be in the description below. You'll also probably want to use Spider Add-ons which is another mod uh, that's quite old now but it provides some excellent functionality and it works uh, with the Alive mod. So let's get started. You'll need to go to Systems and when you're running the Alive uh, mod you'll see that you have Alive modules available in the editor and there's quite a lot of them. Uh, in this uh, tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up the Alive mission for an asymmetric type warfare i.e. an insurgency. Um, it's probably the most popular use of the Alive mod so the first thing you'll need is the Alive Required, which I've already placed down. And I'm just going to open that up and let's have a look at some of the settings. We're going to leave Debug off because Debug will show you what the Alive mod is doing on the map when you open the map. So it shows you all that's happening, which you would normally not be able to see. Um, Alive versioning, um, if someone's got a different version of Alive, having Warn players on will alert them they have a different version. Um, and the two options are warn or kick players. So just leave it at warning. Um, AI distribution, that's um, what's going to handle the distribution of the AI load. And if you're using a headless client, you can select headless client there. But um, I'm just going to leave it at server. Default um, single player save. Uh, well, sorry, disable default single player save. Yes, I don't want this to be a single player mission. Um, disable advanced markers, no. Disable admin actions, no. Auto pause, no. Garbage collector interval. So the interval at which you clean up um, destroyed enemy objects and troops. Um, and the collector limit. Okay, so this will remove all dead objects and groups if this limit is met. It will count all dead. So I've set it at five. All right. Um, garbage collector clutter types, I'm not going to worry about that. The Alive tab Tablet model, um, I'm just going to leave it Tablet 1. So I'll show you what that is and how to use that when we get to that stage. The next one you need is the Alive Virtual AI system, which is also in the list. So let's open up that and again debugs off. Persistent, no. Uh, virtualized only synced units, we'll leave that on. Now with persistent you can actually have the Alive mission be a persistent mission that you can play, save the entire mission and then even if you switch the server off or play a mi another mission if you later go back to your Alive mission you can pick off, pick, pick up where you left off. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. Um, I have posted a link to the armor um, three Alive module wiki page in the description um, and you can have a look more about how to make the mission persistent if that's what you want to do. Um, spawn radius for AI, I've just set that to a thousand so when you're within a thousand meters you'll get AI spawning. Um, I've left heli and planes at zero because I'm not using them. Uh, UAV spawn radius, same thing. Active limiter, so that sets the maximum number of virtualized AI groups to spawn at any one time. So I'm going to knock that down to 100. Um, Zeus spawn virtual groups, yes. So um, it says if enabled, active Zeus entities will spawn virtual groups when in range. So I'm just going to leave that at yes. Uh, virtual unit speed, 100. Virtual combat speed, regular. Experimental pathfinding, no. Infantry sea transport, no and smooth spawn. I think the default when you put this module down is three. I'm going to set that at five. So it makes the spawning of the AI a little smoother and saves you on your server performance. Next module you'll need is civilian placement which is also in the list of modules and let's have a look at that. Uh, debug no. Now I've got an AO marker. You don't really need one particularly if you're using a smaller map but I've just put one on there anyway, uh, which is 
basically a marker that covers uh, and you can see it's a, a bordered box here it covers the entire play area uh, you don't have to have one so if you don't need one don't worry about it um, blacklist marker now I have placed a marker over my base area which is here and given it the variable name of blue for base okay so in the civilian placement um, blacklist marker blue for base which means there won't be any units spawn inside that marker area okay um, set objective size filter ignore small objectives which means civilians won't appear in the vicinity of a small objective um, don't filter uh, you don't need to use that now here we need uh, the variable name of the civilians that you want to use under the force faction section okay and I'll show you how to get that in just a moment placement level medium now you can have low medium higher extreme I'm just going to set it to medium um, higher extremes seem to spawn way too much stuff so just leave it at medium um, place ambient vehicles I've put low ambient vehicles because again you don't want tons of ambient vehicles just floating around for no reason now forgetting the variable name of the civilian faction that you want to use we'll go up to units civilians and I'm using the 3CB mod Takistani uh, components and I'm going to place a civilian down I'm going to right click on the civilian go to log and log classes to clipboard so what it will do is it will log that class to the clipboard and you can see I've just posted it there in the init so I've already done that and we have our civilian faction in there and ambient vehicle faction again also I've set it to the 3CB uh, Takistani civilians okay so that is the civilian placement module next one is civilian population and it's similar sort of settings as we go down the spawn radius heli spawn radius we're not using those or planes active limiter so I've set it to 25 for the number of civilians that spawn at any one time um, and I'm going to set, because this is an asymmetric warfare type mission, I'm going to set the blue for hostility to high. So that means the civilian population will be highly hostile to us initially. Um, and the op for hostility low. So the civilian population kind of support the enemy at this stage. I'm not using um, uh, independence, so I'm going to leave that off. Now civilian roles here, I'm going to select Eastern. Um, because it will actually assign them sort of jobs that they can do um, and it's more suitable to this type of uh, mission enable interaction and I'm going to put yes now with civilian interaction there's another part of that which relates to spider add-ons which I'll get to shortly um, limit the interaction you can limit it to um, player ID names or class names of particular players or variable names I'm just going to leave that blank now the insurgent faction here you can see I've got another variable name and again I've placed an insurgent that I want to use here I've gone to log classes to clipboard and you can see you can just paste V now the way to work out just the variable name and not the variable name of the specific unit or the class name sorry is If we go down to here, which is the insurgents that I'm using, you'll see that all of them have UK 3CB underscore TKM underscore zero. And then after that, they've got more information. So that initial part that they all have, UK 3CB underscore TKM underscore zero, is the class name for that faction. Okay, so if you were to put it in there and you've got TKM sorry UK 3CB underscore TKM underscore zero underscore RIF underscore one you know you could just take off the end bit and that will be the name of the faction not the specific unit and that is where you need to place it here is the insurgent faction which I've done um, crowd spawn radius 50, crowd limit 20, um, crowd faction, now you can put a faction in there, 
um, I'm probably going to use the um, uh, civilian faction for the crowd um, humanitarian hostility decrease so if you get missions um, that are spawn or mission tasks to deliver supplies or food or water uh, this setting will determine how much the civilian hostility decreases when you undertake those humanitarian missions uh, and then some humanitarian aid limit tasks is three and you can set custom class names for water or rations that can be delivered to lower the hostility uh, and I'm not using ace so I'm going to use I'm not going to use the ASEX humanitarian items so they're the initial things that you need and let's get on to show you some more of the stuff that you probably should use okay now we have another thing that is um, a requirement which is the um, C21 star uh, or C2I star I don't know exactly what that stands for but it's the player command and control so this will enable you to use um, your tablet and um, have some faction settings here so an item that is required for your troops to use command and control it's set by default as a laser designator but I've just changed it to compass all right in this section here so anyone who has a compass in their kit can use the system um, persistent tasks um, I've set that as no as this is not a persistent mission um, blue for auto task I'm going to put that as constant so that there will be constant tasks that uh, are generated by the mission for your players now again I've got the auto task blue for faction now this is the faction that I'm using for um, blue for which is the Australian units then we have the enemy faction again uh, auto task for op for none and I've set all of those I'm not using any of these so I've let that left that as none and none so if you had three different player sides being blue for op for and independent you could generate tasks for all of them um, group management parameters just leave that um, there's really not much else you need to play with here except for uh, commander intel sides we're going to set that as west that's initially blank so just put west in there and uh, total coverage of intel is what I've selected there um, friendly coverage yes and this is really important if you want an insurgency type mission the traditional armor 3 insurgency with little red squares everywhere that you need to clear you need to select the trace system okay so it's initially set to none if you set that to a marker type solid horizontal vertical etc um, I've just left it solid that will use the trace system which will place those little red squares all over the map um, player map sectors display map sectors containing players on the map no I've set that to no so that's another requirement there what else I also have is player combat support and again uh, the required item is a compass and then you can set the limits for CAS transport and artillery the respawn time of those and radio messages to show you that they are actually uh, working you can set that to yes or no I've just left it at yes now you can see with the player combat support I have some modules synced to that so this one is the artillery again there's a bunch of stuff in there regarding the number of rounds that can be used and then we have the class name of the artillery unit that will be used for fire missions and you can also set the call sign so I'm going to set that to Sheldrake also synced to the combat player support I have a combat player support transport module and combat player support CAS module now in combat 
uh, support transport. Um, this is basically the helicopter that will provide your transport. Now I'm going to change the call sign to X-Ray 1 because in Online Combat Battalion we have specific call signs for specific unit types. And the transport vehicle type is this one which is an RHS class name for a Black Hawk. Um, and to get that, if you're not sure how to, I'll just go to uh, US Army Desert Helicopters, place it down, right click on it, log classes to clipboard, and that's how you will get the class name, which you just place into that section there. Likewise, I've done the same for the combat uh, support CAS module, and that is the class name for an AH 64 Apache. And I'm going to change the name of that call sign to Sabre 1. So you don't actually need those assets physically sitting on the map. Because um, what happens is, although the modules are there, uh, when the mission starts, those two helicopters will appear in those positions. So think about where you're going to place those modules. Because that's where your choppers will be. Now, we also need a military AI commander module. And I'm going to open that up. Um, and I'm going to select debug as yes at this stage because I want to see on the map what the mod is doing. Uh, persistent, no control type. Now, you can have invasion, occupation, or asymmetric. And I'm going to be using asymmetric because this is an insurgency. And here you have some um, sections related to other things that will happen in the mission. So um, installations for the asymmetric forces I've set to high. Roadblocks, yes. So the enemy will actually set up roadblocks on roads and tracks. Reinforcements, um, you can s set them as constant packets or seldom. I'm going to probably try setting them to packets and see what happens. I've, I have been using seldom, but we'll just see what happens. Now, the incidences of intelligence dropped by enemy troops. Um, you can have that as none, seldom, often. Uh, I'm going to set it to often. Uh, now, these factions uh, I've left blank because I'm not using an AI commander to control AI troops. All right, so uh, you'll see that here there's no way to select a particular faction. You just have NATO, CSAT, AAF, Syndicate, Rebels, Blue or Red, and I'm going to leave that at None. And the override faction for any that do pop up is the same class name as the insurgents that I'm using. Um, Max is simultaneous attacks, 10, and minimum recruitment size, 2. Synced to the Military AI Commander module, I have the Military IED threat. So the blacklist marker, which covers my base area, so there won't be any IDs, IEDs in there. And you can set the threat level, um, the detection, which is either text or audio. So if it's set at audio, you'll hear the beeping when you come in close to an IED. If it's set to text, it'll give you a radio chat or a side chat message. Um, the IED detector class, mine detector. So if someone's got a mine detector, they'll be able to hear that audio and work out there's a mine or an IED nearby. Here we set the suicide bomber threat. I've set it to medium. Um, if you use high or extreme, it seems to be crazy. So I've just set it to medium. You can put an optional class name for a suicide bomber in here if you wish. You can set the vehicle borne IED threat level. I've set that to medium. Again, if you set that too high, you're going to have car bombs driving around everywhere, trying to blow up, blow you up every two minutes. So I've just set that to medium. Um, the bomber or IED um, vehicle side, I've set to civilian. Um, and the IED or bomber locations to enemy occupied. I might just set that to random. 
so it's a little more unpredictable. And I'm not using a third party IED system, so I've left that at no. And then these are just the class names of the IEDs that will be placed by the mission. You can uh, change those if you wish. Now I also have a military placement um, module. And we have uh, debug no, blacklist marker, blue four base, objective size and priority don't filter, which means they'll appear anywhere and everywhere. Um, place units, uh, the force size that you want to use as reinforcements I've set as 100. Force weighting I've set as light infantry. You can use random, armoured, mechanised, motorised, light infantry or spec ops. I've just left it at uh, light infantry. Random camps, medium, readiness 75%. Um, and the override infantry is the class name of the insurgents. Um, and just leave these at zero. Again, force faction, the insurgents. They can create headquarters, field HQs. Um, I've set them to place air units no, because they are Taliban and they don't have air resources. Um, place supplies, yes. Uh, low ambient vehicles and high ambient guards. So I think they're all fairly self-explanatory. I have a military placement module. Again, it's got very similar things um, to the thing I just looked at. Um, military, uh, yep, so that's the military placement. Oh, I've got two of the. Oh, this one's military placement, military objective. And this one's military placement, civilian objective. Again, it's the same settings, pretty much as the last module. So you can have a look at a quick look at those and change them as you wish. Also, have a military close quarters battle module, and what this does is it shows you settings for um, where you want insurgents to be inside buildings for close quarter battle scenarios. So. Um, I've set the type to strategic, um, CQB locations to complete map, probability 10%, I'm going to set that to 20%, see what happens, medium density, uh, now the number you can have of insurgents spawning uh, into buildings, you can set as a solo, pair, fire team, I'm going to leave it as a fire team. Static weapons, none. I've left that at none because I think the static weapons are a bit ridiculously overpowered for a uh, mission like this. And you can put static weapon class names in here, separated with a comma, if you want to use them. Um, placement, I've left that at dominant. Um, ground spawn, static weapon spawn, that, that's not going to work. Uh, heli and jet spawn distances. And again, we have the faction name of the insurgents. We have the um, tactical area of operations marker if you're using one and the blacklist master marker as blue for base. Um, so they're all the alive modules that you'll need. Now you need to make sure that your combat support module is synced to combat support artillery combat support transport and combat support CAS, close air support, and your military AI commander, the modules military IED threat, military placement, military objective, military placement, civilian objective, and military close quarters battle need all to be synced to the military AI commander. Uh, I've got military logistics here now I know that this should work um, but it's currently not working for some reason but it's not a big deal anyway okay so now we've gone over all the alive modules that are required I'm going to go through some of these spider add-on modules that will really make your mission uh, a lot more interesting the first one is the loadout manager and you just go to 
your modules down to spider add-ons and there you've got a bunch there that you can use so um, the, the loadout manager if you sync that to your arsenal box so there's the module over there it's synced to the arsenal box it will enable you to use the loadout manager so you can save you can access not only the arsenal but you can save your loadouts under a profile name and you can then use those loadouts in any mission that you play not just the one you're placing this in provided the mission has spider add-ons and um, you have saved that um, it could be a completely different mission on a completely different server and you'll still have access to that list of um, pre-saved profiles for your loadouts it's very very good um, now I did place a recruitment module but I'm actually going to take that out because it does not work um, a vehicle spawner now I'm gonna place um, with the vehicle spawner I haven't actually tested this for a while I'm going to um, move the flagpole to here I'm going to place the vehicle spawner module onto a helipad and then I'm going to sync the vehicle spawner module to the flagpole and test that out to see if I can use the flagpole as the spawning location for the vehicles so we'll have a look at that shortly to make sure that works uh, now we've got the spider add-ons ambient module and in this you can set the settings for the ambient stuff that you want um, to appear as in civilians and vehicles and all that sort of stuff one thing that is uh, important here is the enemy will use ambient vehicles um, so you want to make sure that if you're using ambient vehicles under the spider add-ons mod that you change the class names here of these units because if you don't they will use CSAT units now to obtain a whole bunch of class names rather than just individually selecting um, them you can go to your uh, compositions and I'm using the Texas Insurgents I'm going to go to infantry and I'm going to select a rifle fire team and I've placed that down so that's an entire um, actually I'm going to use a rifle section more people okay so that's an entire section now instead of going to each individual and going to log classes to clipboard you can highlight them all right click on one of them go to log classes to clipboard and then in notepad or whatever other text editor you use you can just hit control V and it will paste all of the class names for you now what you need to use uh, in the module is all of the class names which I've separated here with commas so you put in a class name comma class name comma etc there's no spaces required and once you've got all of that you can simply grab them and paste them into the module a couple of other pretty important modules in spider add-ons are the civilian interaction module uh, you set the insurgent faction and enable it and that will enable you to uh, interact with civilians and I'll show you how that works uh, shortly there's another one which is the call to prayer module enable that the times of the prayer which is uh, I don't know how these are sorted but I don't play with them and I'm using this one here uh, which will broadcast the call to prayer at various times during the mission and what I've done is I've used a manual marker and called it MOS because it's at the mosque uh, the, mo the markers actually here I just made it invisible um, and you place that into the module and this is where your uh, call to prayer will emit from which makes sense because it's at the mosque so I'm in the mission and we've got our um, spider add-ons 
uh, loadout manager and I've showed you this in another video so basically you can access the arsenal get your loadout type a name in the bottom here save loadout and then hit load on respawn and it will save your loadout into the list here and um, uh, it will load when you respawn um, you can actually uh, transfer your loadout to another player um, you can export it all that sort of stuff now you note that I put those modules down for CAS and transport although I didn't physically place those helicopters down the module has spawned them in for me let's test the vehicle spawner and no, no available vehicles so that probably needs a fair bit more configuration so if you can find something else then um, use that instead now I can already hear ambient vehicles moving around and I can also hear some small arms fire um, out to the other side of the airfield so remember I haven't placed any AI down except for well only uh, my player nothing else okay so we've got insurgents that are now coming into the base which isn't Obviously, they've got a vehicle here which is not going to be friendly. So, if you've got any AT type stuff, take that out. Okay, so you can see some messages popping up bottom left hand side of the screen. Uh, what that's doing is it's in debug mode. So, it's now showing me what it's doing, what the script is doing, what the module is doing. And if I open the map, you can see all the little red squares. You can also see these little name markers east which is where it's putting in uh, bits and pieces for you to go and look after. Um, if I also go into Zeus, you'll be able to see all the stuff that it's put down. Remember, I didn't place down any AI. The Alive system has placed all of this stuff down. So we've got some enemy ambient patrols here. Uh, we've got that vehicle there that dropped off all those troops. Another ambient patrol it's way too close to my aircraft um, it's used buildings for the CQB stuff so we've got some guys here and that's a fire team as I selected in the module settings uh, another one there uh, we've got a stack of civilians they're all around the place and they should be oh, okay they're normal sort of civvies which is okay I guess and yeah scary and I did just hear a radio that is freaky ass don't even know where that's coming from it's probably in a live module thing uh, because a live module does do sounds um, a roadblock enemy set up a roadblock and you'll also see that we have tasks so if we go back out of Zeus and have a look at the map we'll see we've got a task up there and it is to wiretap an installation okay now because we set up the uh, stuff for anyone with a compass I can go pressing my uh, Windows interaction key which is on the right side of the keyboard next to your just to the left of your control key on most keyboards um, commander actions this is the stuff uh, that relates to your supports operations tasks intel etc um, I'll let you have a look at this that you can do cool things like uh, send a sit rep so you can complete all this and then send sit rep and that will then be available in the intel section on the map so I'll just put in here just as an example lots of bad guys friendly state we all good and other remarks this is a test and I'll send the sit rep 
and if we go into sit rep we then have the sit rep here uh, likewise you can go to commander actions and send patrol report um, which is similar thing you sort of follow the bouncing ball send patrol report and it will save it for everyone to be able to review also in there we have um, Intel now you can look at uh, the commander objectives which will it will show you on the map back unit marking which will show you any blue four units on the map and green likewise uh, go back to commander actions um, combat support now this enables you to use the artillery CAS or transport and I would like it at the moment just as an example I'm going to use CAS I'm going to go to Sabre 1 search and destroy in that location uh, the rules of engagement CAS patrol radius and the altitude and I'm going to confirm requesting close air support at the designated location So you'll see the chopper's now spooling up and it'll go and perform CAS tasks at the location I've asked it to. Roger. Likewise with the transport GAS aircraft, um, I can go to combat support, uh, transport, and I can get it to land wherever I want, to pick up land, land with the engine off, move, circle, insertion, sling load, unhook, etc. Now if you are running a mission you're having difficulty with tasks because sometimes the alive tasks you're unable to complete them or they don't spawn properly. You can actually go to tasks and you see the current tasks here. You can delete the task or edit the task um, and it will get rid of it for you. You can also create a task. Uh, you can put in the task title description the type of task that now uh, or the state which players it's, it's assigned to and that's pretty much an assign type um, uh, move type go here do this uh, we can also go to um, generate a task uh, here we get to select the task type um, from map location or you can set a short distance from where you are so I'm going to set a task. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's just make it in a random spot. Let's place a marker there. So I'm going to make that HVT assassination uh, from map selection, which is my marker. I'm going to set the enemy type as the 3CB Takistani Insurgents Op 4. Um, apply to all players on my side and I'm going to set it as the current task generate the task and then it'll say you need to select some players for some reason apply to all players on my side doesn't work so um, apply to the assigned individuals generate tasks uh, oh assign players so you need to select the players and then I can generate the task and there we go the task is generated and we can see I've got to eliminate the target so uh, the alive module will place tasks so we've already got one placed by the modules and we've now got another target down here um, I might just skip over to that and see if it's placed any ambient troops. Oh, yes, it has. Yeah. So it does place ambient troops around a task like that. Um, so that is uh, pretty much how you set up the uh, mission for using the Alive um, mod. Um, it is highly recommended. It is a really good mod. It does some really good stuff. Um, I have used it. Um, before quite a bit I uh, recently used it for another mission and set the mission type from asymmetric to something else and the tasks weren't spawning properly 
So the way I've done it here is probably the way that you will want to do it if you want it to work okay. Um, I think I've covered off everything for using a live. Uh, if I haven't, please ask me further questions in the comments section below. I'll post those links for the Alive Mod Wiki uh, into the description. Uh, ask any questions you like. Come and visit us on our Discord. Um, thank you so much for watching and for all your support, and I'll see you in the next video.